the outdoors nest. It's time for a mini outdoors thing. It's Monday. And I have a couple hours between work projects. So I thought I'd come out and uh, check on the morel patch and see if the fiddleheads are ready to be nipped. I'm uh, pretty sure I'll get some fiddleheads. Morels are another uh, who knows type of situation. We are well into the first week of May, so, uh, and I'm seeing on the Facebooks and the forums that uh, some people are getting to their morels. So hopefully we'll get lucky and be among them. Um, mushrooms don't always come up in the same spot every year. So it's not like a guarantee far from it. But uh, we got as good a chance as we'll ever have checking it. So. Oh, I didn't wear any bug spray because I got to go somewhere later and didn't want to smell like bug spray. So I'm going to try the uh, whatever these are. Thermocell. The jury is still out on these. Um, I am not sure if it works or not. <laughs> I had it uh, when I went camping over the weekend, but frankly, with the temperature being what it was, I don't even know if I would have needed it. There just weren't any bugs. Sometimes I see fiddleheads right around here, but I'm not right now. So maybe they are not by there, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna jump over the logs. Not weed, more not weed. So on my way in here, I'm noticing more not weed. There was a patch in the meadow that leads in here too. No, no, that's the knotweed I actually chopped. What's that? The time I'm in here, I think I see something down there. All right, usually I find morels over here if they're here, so let's get in here and look around. Remember I said, uh, when I found them around that one time, this place was all pretty overgrown with uh, greenery. They were hard to see. Um, there isn't as much greenery right here, so maybe I'm still super early. And this might be an extremely pointless video that never sees the light of day, but who knows. Let's look around here. There's a the tree going down. This is the kind of tree you find morels around. I think I've said that before. But just because you don't see that tree doesn't mean there aren't morels. Like the, the morel seems to be able to do okay without the tree. I don't know if it's the other way around though. Ah, oh, wow. Drink it in kids. The first morel of the year. He's a tiny guy. But that's okay. And once you see one, you'll you'll start to see more. Unless there's only one here, in which case we won't see any more. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna sit with this and then just enjoy it for a bit because I've been waiting for this moment for um, like most of a year now, so. Yeah, I'm gonna take it in. should be thankful whenever we find a nice little edible like that. Like I was saying, the woods doesn't always cough up morels for you. Like I was also saying, once you see one, you start to see them all. That's neat. All right, let's uh, chop these little guys. I'm gonna leave that old guy right there. I'm gonna leave and take that. And let's get this guy. Oh, 
All right, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think six. Well, that was cool. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't expect to find any Franklin. Well, let's keep nosing around and see if we get any more. Any more help. <laughs> no. All right, I'd like to introduce you to one of our little forest friends. crankier than normal. Usually you can just pick those guys up and they just slither away. I've never seen one that does. Alright. Um, yeah, I didn't come out here to harass animals. <laughs> I'm going to stop annoying him and go back to hunting my mushrooms. And uh, hopefully no snaky snake boys have an issue with it. So, I'm one of those people that thinks it's important to learn about all the plants, animals, and mushrooms. I say that, but I'm not going to go out of my way to figure out what those are, just because I don't really care. They look like uh, deer mushrooms, but, or what I call deer mushrooms, but I don't know, per se. You know what? Well, no, we'll look at them up later. I'm on kind of a time limit here today and what I used to do is if I saw an interesting mushroom I'd uh, pick it I'd take it home and I'd try to identify it with a guidebook but um, I'd quickly kind of get bite off more than I could chew and I end up with just a pile of rotten mushrooms which isn't a big deal like it's like picking an apple off an apple tree or something you're not really hurting the fungus or anything but um it's just one of those things so as much as i'd like to know what kind of mushrooms those are for sure like i said i gotta i can't be in here all day. i mean her a while but just not long enough to mess around with things so anyway the hunt continues for edible mushrooms place is absolutely filled with garlic mustard like I'm not gonna get into it today but like I got half a mind to come back here and just pull as much as I can could be you know, make like a pesto out of the leaves or something but could also just leave it here uh, I've talked about garlic mustard before I'm not gonna do it again right now it's uh concealing the ground where I would um it's my morels. I don't know if it like uh inhibits the growth. I don't know. I guess if I find a morel growth among the uh garlic mustard that'll put a I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that'd tell me. Huh. Okay. Um uh oh there's the fiddleheads over there. Um, they look like maybe they're a little too big though So it looks like when I saw them the last time instead of giving them another week, maybe I should have been here the next day I won't know until I actually walk up to them Still get an eye out for morels right now they uh It is crazy how like You don't see them and then you see one and then BAM like you see the whole patch I was told, or I've seen advertised, these uh, glasses that you can get with these lenses. They do something with the uh, light that makes uh, morels in particular easy to spot. It's a problem with looking at the ground the whole time you're in here. You uh, neglect your head. Look at this. the ramp and then tips nibbled and no I'm not closer any closer to figuring out what does that than I was the last time I started talking about ah. 
Here we go. I knew it. Okay, there's one. Spotted that guy. There's a third little one over there and a fourth behind him. And a fifth. And I don't see any over there. So. Just to prove what I'm talking about, let me get my knife. You don't need a knife to harvest them, you can just pull them, but it's cleaner this way. I think. There's a little one. I'm gonna leave him. Uh, or the other one doesn't. You know, that guy looks smaller than what I want to deal with. So we'll leave him to get bigger. And I think I will help myself to this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's probably about as big as you. Any end of the bushes here? Any big ones? I don't see any. Oh! I don't know if I got him on film. Check that guy out. They can get much bigger. Like, I don't know if there's some Photoshop trickery in play, but I've seen photos of them, like, as big as my f arm, almost. Okay. Right here. All right, let's uh, work our way down. Don't forget our walking. Oh, I've got to introduce you to another forest friend. He's an eepy little guy, hiding under his log. We'll step over him. Those, those are called red Fs. And the neat thing about those is their life cycle. Like, uh, that's the young stage. When they get older, they'll uh, turn brown and basically go to the water. But um, they've got, it seems like they've got a lot of different life cycles. Like they just keep getting more salamander as they go. So they're cool. It rained like heck on Sunday. So, that could be why a lot of this stuff is up. And now on this side of the log. Sometimes you just stop. And you just kind of look. And something will jump out at you. Right now, all that's jumping out at me is another one of our little salamander pals. More of that damn garlic mustard. God, I hate that shit. I think I might just come back here later and rip it out on principle. Alright, I've come to the fiddlehead patch. And unfortunately for me, I think a lot of them are too old to be clipped and nipped. Maybe, maybe that's fine right there. Gotta take that. I don't know if I want to go through every one of these plants and do that. Anyway, if you want to know how to identify one of these guys, um, first thing you look for is the dead ones from last year. And then the big tell, like of all all the all the ferns you can find the big tell of these is the groove right there like none of the other kinds will have that groove that's another type i can't remember the name but no groove pretty yeah but they get this like brown papery on them they curl just like that come out of these stalks here but again the groove I am gonna steal some of the ones that haven't fully come up yet, so we might get out of here with a handful yet, but like, I'm mostly looking for the morels. So, <laughs> I like fiddleheads, but like, uh, you know, if I go a year without getting a lot, it's not gonna break my heart, so. Okay, I'm gonna uh, put my stick where I won't lose it and uh, go around and check. These ramps look a little distressed, don't they? They got yellow leaves, holes in them. 
might be a bug got to him. Oh, um, I got enough fiddleheads for maybe a little stir fry later. So that's cool. Um, yeah, sometimes those stalks, you'll see them all grown up, but in the middle of them will be one or two that haven't unfolded yet, and so those are the ones I nipped. And that's fine because usually when you come across a stalk, it's good practice not to take every single one of them. You know, leave a couple for the uh, the forest to spread the spores or whatever they are. I don't, I'm not going to get into it, I don't know. Ferns, I don't think they work like normal plants, but don't quote me on any of that because I haven't looked it up. It's been a while since I heard any of it, so keep the false information to a minimum. Anyway getting to where I need to think about heading out of here because like I said I got that uh, I gotta head up to work later do a work thing <clears throat> and it's pretty great that I was in the woods today and found some mushrooms and found some fiddleheads because where I'm going and what I'll be listening to is the kind of stuff well let's put it this way um, it's not the most fun thing in the world. Not weed. I think that's not weed. Yeah, but it's not weed. Mm. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kill this a bit. <clears throat> I might not have stopped it, but. Because like I was saying, it, uh, what I've been told is it propagates very quickly. Still looking for morels. Uh, you remember a little while ago I was talking about uh, half free morels. And how there's another spot away from here where I tend to find those. Well, I forgot. Occasionally find them around. What the hell? Vines, man. I forgot. Occasionally, you'll find one, um, find one, find them in here. And I think we have. Yeah. Sorry, slug. Yeah, let's see what came right up. So you see how the cap comes off like that. Yeah, let's get rid of Mr. Slug. Nice right, slug, you're gonna find your own breakfast today. Compare that to um, the morel, or the cap. Doesn't do that. The cap comes right to the stem with the half free. The cap is half free. That's why they call it a half free morel. And I forgot they were in here. So now I gotta keep an eye out for those. You won't see any from here, but. Anyway. So we reached the spot where I was uh, scarfing knotweed last week and I cut a lot as I recall and I didn't leave many. Like, I think I cut just about everyone I could see. And as you can see, there's uh, you know, two weeks later, there's a lot of it. And one thing I brought up in that video about the ants, like I was just reading up on knotweed before I came out. And, uh, someone said, yeah, one of the ways you can identify it is it'll tend to have ants on it. And I was like, sure, whatever. And then like the first plant I looked at was covered in ants. And I think these all have ants on them too. Except now that I've said that, they're, they're gone. There's one. I assure you, there's ants on that plant. There's ants on a lot of plants, but um, not weed tends to have them more than the others. Uh, so it's about three o'clock, I think. Like I said, I've reached the end of my little trek here. Oh, I did find, a, I think maybe three true morels after the half free morel in that same little patch. So that's, that's not a bad haul at all. I'm happy with that. If I don't find another one, that's okay. I'm gonna come back here soon for one reason or another, whether it's to 
find more morels or kill that garlic mustard. I don't know yet. Maybe both. But anyway, um, I gotta start heading back. I can walk out of here in well under an hour, but I plan to take my time. So let's start heading back to the real world. Or maybe the fake world. Who knows what you want to call it. Okay. I did not find anything except uh, for more garlic mustard and more Japanese knotweed. There's a lot of it in there. It is pretty abundant, unfortunately. Anyway, I'll be back later. Hopefully find more morels. Hopefully find more morel spots. Not a bad haul at all. Good for a stir fry tonight with rice, like I said. Uh, it's about 3.20. I need to hit the road at 4, so I can't be messing around in here anymore. So, I think that's the video. Like and subscribe if you enjoy these. And I'll keep doing it.